Greetings again in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Pastor May J. G. Gilbert Sr. coming to you this morning from On The Wall Ministries here in Alta Vista, Virginia. We're coming to you this morning at our Sunday school hour. We are in a, a little hurry this morning. We've got an engagement at 10 o'clock and uh, we've got a half hour drive. So we're going to give about 20 minutes of our Sunday school this morning. Then I have to drive down to uh, Sucking Buffalo for their morning service, pastors. Uh, I think getting off of uh, revival and he's going on vacation, I believe, and I'm not sure, but he called and asked me to uh, preach in his stead this morning. We thank God for that opportunity. So we do greet you in the wonderful and the marvelous name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Beautiful lesson this morning, the word becomes flesh. The word becomes flesh coming out of the gospel of John, first chapter, verses 1 through 14. Very familiar text, July the 3rd. We, uh, we thank God for you and we wish each and every you a happy 4th of July, Independence Day. And uh, we pray that you would just continue to be careful and be safe and enjoy yourself. So let's get into our lesson this morning. Again, we are going to have about 20 minutes of Sunday school this morning. Then we'll get into... Uh, uh, try to go to another engagement. Uh, the scripture says this morning, John 1st chapter, verses 1 through 14, uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him there was nothing made that was made. In Him was life, and, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehendeth it not. And there was a man sent from God whose name for John. The same uh, came as a witness to bear a witness to the light, uh, that all men through him might believe. Uh, eighth, Verse, he was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness to that light. That was the true light, which light is every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, but the world was made by him, uh, and uh, the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, he gave them power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name, which were born not of blood, not of will of the flesh, not of will of man, but of God. Uh, verse 14, our final in our lesson this morning. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and beheld his glory, glory as of only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. All right, this morning as we get into our lesson, our T-Text says that all things are made by him, and without him there was not anything made that was made. Uh, Partners in a New Creation is our theme for our study, the word, the agent of creation. And our lesson aims this morning, uh, we want to be able to identify the word, then explain this respective Missions of John the Baptist and Jesus Christ is the word. Then identify one way where we can continue the mission of John the Baptist of planning or to prepare the way for the Lord. Uh, as I get into our introduction, we're talking about caring in person. Uh, I enjoy nearly every aspect of ministry in our local church. Visiting members remain a special part. And, and during times of visit, uh, you might drink tea with a longtime church member. And then you ask the person about their walk with Christ. Other visits, many times, we are, uh, we, we, they're not happy circumstances. We are dealing with everything, but healing and sickness and disease and death, everything. A church member once told me, I didn't fully understand how much you cared until you came. And uh, my in-person ministry to the individuals in a church demonstrated our love for them. And then scripture tells us that God's love for his people, he loves us. The extent of his love has been and still being demonstrated in the world today as we see. Uh, in our lesson context, we looking at the Gospel of John. Uh, the three synoptic Gospels is Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But John is, is a distinct a gospel within itself. It really talks about the love of God. And, and it doesn't point to those three uh, synoptic Gospels as they follow each other as uh, 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 taking the... Uh, 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 the life of Jesus Christ, but the, John's gospel draws the reader's attention of uh, talking about the word of God, uh, the word of God. So as we look at our text this morning, it says that in the beginning was the word. 
and the word was God and the word with God. Here he's telling us that he's trying to take Jesus to Christ, his identity all the way back to the beginning. Uh, as Genesis starts off with in the beginning, here are uh, the New Testament. John is starting off in the New Testament here with what? In the beginning was the word. His son, his gospel, uh, the John's gospel is talking about the beginning all the way back. The eternal, from eternity to eternity. Jesus the Christ was the word. He was with God and the word was God. While God the Father and the eternal word are one, but they are the same in nature. They are also distinct in their persons, in their duties. The, uh, the word shares the same nature as God, but it operates uniquely in a different way. John had to stress that the word is equal to God and, and that God of Israel. Therefore, the word is the same as God and has the same attributes as God. And then verse 2 says, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. John concluded in his introduction that uh, at that eternal nature of the word, God goes all the way back to the beginning, goes back to the beginning, even since the beginning. Then said that all things were made by him, not God, but made by him the word, which is the uh, son of God. And, and without him, there was not anything made that was made. John transitions from the discovery of nature of the word to the discussion of the work of the word. The word is creative, it's personal. Genesis tells us how God created uh, by his word and John applies this idea to the work of eternal life in his making things all possible for him he says that uh, the word is coexisted with the father but the word also is the source of life for you and I so he says that also in verse 4 in him was life and the life was the light of men. Uh, God uh, did not simply create life, but life pre-existed in him by nature of uh, the word's relationship with the father. The substance of life is more than physical, uh, for the word is found eternal in us. God wants us to have that light. He said he's bringing light into the world. So this uh, world of darkness that we in, Jesus Christ brings life into the world, even into this dark world. And the scripture says in verse 5, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. The word became a spiritual light for all people that will be able to receive the word. And John expands about this creative account, God's creation of light by the power of his word. He said, let there be light, even in Genesis. He said, let there be light. He spoke life into existence. And also, he spoke that light into existence so that we can have that light. He said that the light or the darkness comprehend this. Or, or he says that uh, the, the, it does not comprehend the scope of God's light. Uh, John seems to be saying that darkness failed to achieve a level of knowledge of God's light. You can never get the knowledge that God has uh, prepared for us in this world that we in. It has to come through the word, the light that shows and shines into our lives. We got to be in a slow hurry. Uh, we had nine minutes on. And then verse 6 says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. And, and, and then he, he's talked about a human witness. Each one of us has to be that human witness. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. John um, transitioned to describe the man that will turn out to be the earthly forerunner of the word. John came to uh, let the world know that the word was coming to be able to bring light into this world. But he said the same came for a witness to bear witness to the light that all men through him might believe. John is introducing in the world the one that will be able to come and save mankind. And he was to bear witness to Jesus Christ. But the same uh, uh, 
duties that John had, we have those same duties also. It's our duty to bear witness of the light that Jesus Christ has brought into the world. He says that he was not the light, but he was sent to bear witness to the light. Uh, we, we, we are the light of the world, but we are to bear witness to the light of the world that Jesus Christ can only bring into our lives. That's what Jesus does. At the same time, of this composition of John's gospel, some people apparently were held to that belief. However, the gospel dispelled the misunderstanding that John the Baptist was not the light. He only came to bear witness to the light. See, we are not to bring light on ourselves. We are to shine light on Christ. Let the world know that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Then verse, uh, verse 9, the true light. He says that that was the true light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. See, Jesus Christ is the true light. The light that will shine that every man can be able to see to have an opportunity for salvation. Verse 10 says that he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. John describes the irony relating to the true light. That while the light made the world and dwelleth in the world, not all people will accept the light. No one will always accept the light. John says the world is talking about the earth and the planet, but also the rebellious part of the world. It will not accept Christ. He came into the world. And, and, and the world was made by him, but he said that all of the world will not know him. They will not receive him. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Since the true light, the word of God, created the world, and he was in the world, the world and the people therein are considered his own. Therefore, when he came into the world, it was not, uh, uh, it was its originator and his possessor. However, the reception was less than welcome. And when he came into the world, scripture tells us that the world received him not. Verse 12 says, but as many as received him, that gives us hope this morning, doesn't it? But many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Despite the sad reality that many people will reject Jesus, the Christ, as God's son, many others will receive him. The scripture says from nation to nation, numbers that will not be numbered. But he said that we, uh, many will receive him and receive eternal life as a result. These people receive God's grace through Jesus Christ, the free gift of salvation offered through our darling son, Jesus Christ. And then he said power. Power indicates that we have the ability to do something. But the underlying Greek text says transferred, translated is right. He says that 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 this power, we have the right to be able to save uh, our lives through giving of our lives by the power of Jesus Christ that has resurrected us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Verse 13. Verse 13. I told you we had to get through our lesson in the hurry this morning. He says that uh, which were born not of blood, not of the will of flesh, but not of the will of man, but of God. The new family identity happens by virtue of birth. And, and, but not physical birth. It is about the spiritual birth. Remember we said Jesus was not all physical. It was more about the spiritual. John uses three negative phrases to stress uh, that being born as a children of God cannot be attained uh, through this physical uh, procreative act. He says that, that no physical reality, the blood or, or the desire, the flesh, or the human will, nothing could result in a new birth. Only, he says that there's only way, one way to the Father, that is by me. So he is the word of truth. That person can come into God's family by accepting Jesus Christ only. Then the only son, verse 14, and the word was made flesh, and he dwelt with us, and he beheld his glory, and the glory only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He said that he dwelled with us, and the word was made flesh. John previously stated that the word was the true light, had come into the world. The nature of coming into the world is now evident. The word took on human flesh. This identifies the eternal, the pre-existent word as the Son of God, who is only Jesus the Christ. Uh, eternal life. 
comes by salvation through Jesus Christ only. And so this word was made flesh and he dwelt with us. The incarnation, the word of God did more than just come to the earth. In Jesus Christ, the word dealt within creation. By describing this incarnate word in manner, John alludes to God's presence, his dwelling place in the tabernacle of the camp of Israel. The same God made his presence to Israel, now makes his presence to us. That, that, that through Jesus Christ, he said that his name is Emmanuel, that he, he is dwelled with us. He is with us. God is with us. He is dwelling with us. And we shall behold his glory. And the glory only of the begotten of the Father, full of grace. John includes himself as among those that beheld the glory of the God through Jesus Christ. John had seen first in the work of Jesus. And in addition, providing proof of his divine nature, glory observed by John could not be ascribed to God the Father. The incarnate Son was able to receive this because he was the unique and only begotten Son of God. There is no other one like Jesus. The unique and the only Son of God, Jesus demonstrated the attributes of his Father, and through his incarnation, God's grace was made available to the world. Furthermore, Jesus embodies God's truth. And through the incarnate word, God's truth has been revealed to all humanity. And as we conclude this morning, as we conclude this morning, uh, embodied to start so much of the work of ministry and leading the church requires in-person work much church meetings or fellowships and praying for them in the hospitals and visitations and newborn and there are other occurrences in commonplace in ministry that require our physical presence the central theme of Christian faith requires a similar kind of physical embodied presence God intended uh, that his love and grace to humanity in an extraordinary way, the word of God became flesh through our darling son, Jesus Christ. This act beyond human comprehension was an extraordinary gift of God, embodied his presence. And, and in a response, people can now accept that gift with humility and gratitude and faith. And as a result of this gift, Jesus the Christ, uh, there is a change of identity to becoming the children of God, God's children. Uh, we are tasked with extending this love also to others. And increasingly in disembodied human experience, we demonstrated the frequent use of, of, of everything God's children. We uh, intentionally choose to love others by their physical presence. How will you love others? By your presence in the days to come. Will you be that example of Jesus Christ's love? Will you be the example of love that God showed when he sent his only begotten son into the world to die for our sins? So our prayer this morning is that Heavenly Father, you demonstrated your love when you sent your son into the world to live among us and to be the light. And help us to have that attentive uh, to the light that, that your son showed that we might show others. Show us how to reflect that light to our community that we live in and those that are around us. So we pray in the precious name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Amen. Our thought to remember is God's salvation has dwelt among us. His salvation has dwelt among us. So we thank God for you joining us uh, this morning at our Sunday school hour. We told you we had a, a quick stint of a 20-minute Sunday school lesson this morning. We have an, an, a, an a, a obligation to be at uh, Second Buffalo this morning at our 10 o'clock hour. We've got the 30-minute drive. Give us, uh, we pray for traveling mercies. God bless you. May heaven have a smile upon you. And we'll give your name praise, glory, and honor for all that he has done in our lives. But we thank you for watching us and joining us on this morning. Be blessed.